Hi, I'm Shashank Bhargav and you're listening to Three Things, the Indian Express news show. On Wednesday, Prime Minister Narendra Modi gave the first clear signal that some restrictions are likely to continue even after the 21-day lockdown ends. This signal came from a video conference that he did with leaders of various political parties where he said that the government's priority is to save each life and every life and that based on the opinion of experts a lockdown is the only way to curb the spread of the coronavirus. And yesterday Chief Minister Navin Patnaik announced that schools in Orissa will remain closed till July 17th and said that he will suggest the central government to extend the nationwide lockdown till the same period. In another development, the UP government has sealed a number of coronavirus hotspots within various districts and placed stricter restrictions there. And we will talk about these restrictions in today's episode. We will also talk about hundreds of women in West Bengal queuing up to access 500 rupees as part of the economic relief that was announced by the government post the lockdown. But first we talk about healthcare workers. With cases increasing every day, significant burden is being faced by hospitals and medical professionals and coupled with a lack of proper equipment and management a number of them have tested positive for the coronavirus while being on duty in the first segment tabassum banagarwala a correspondent from mumbai talks about the pressure that doctors and hospitals have been facing in the city which has one of the highest number of active patients in the country uh tabassum we are seeing covid-19 cases rise every day and our healthcare system is being burdened right now and we've also had now several cases where both doctors and nurses have tested positive could you talk about the challenges being faced by medical professionals right now uh, i think mumbai has the highest number of healthcare professionals testing positive for coronavirus about more than 65 uh, doctors nurses and paramedics have already tested positive most of them from private healthcare sectors so i think there are two three issues that are happening here the hospitals were not prepared enough to manage you know the covid patients that were coming also there were patients who had no travel history no contact with a confirmed case and they were getting admitted in normal wards and they were being treated like normal patients the staffers were not using enough protective gear and as a result of that they have been exposed to these patients and the infection has transferred specifically now in mumbai we have about six hospitals that have been declared as containment zone which means that the hospitals have been sealed they have been instructed to test all their staffers and no new patient is allowed to be admitted either in the opd or in the uh, inpatient department so as a result of which we have six major hospitals which have completely come down patients can't go there for treatment and it's not just corona virus that we are seeing there are also other infections and ailments which are getting hampered because of this you have reported about the walkhard hospital which is a good example in that sense could you talk about the number of positive cases that have come out there and what were the reasons there for the spread as on no wednesday we had 54 people including 3 to 5 doctors who had tested positive for corona virus in walkhard hospital so the hospital is saying that there was a super spreader patient who was admitted on march 17 a 70 year old employee who had no travel history again no known contact with a case and he was admitted for an angioplasty few days later he started developing symptoms of corona virus and he was admitted in a normal ward now the nurses are claiming here that there has been a delay in quarantining nurses as soon as this patient tested positive for corona virus as a result of which he spread infection to a male and a female nurse and they further spread the infection to other staffers so now the problem here is that these two nurses live in a hostel where all the other nurses live they share a bus from the hostel to the hospital with all these nurses and they share a common cafeteria space so it seems that the infection has spread at these three locations to other nurses initially the nurses were not tested a lot of them developed the symptoms and spread the infection to other people by the time they were all tested uh, we now have a count of 54 people who are positive in the hospital so the entire hospital has been shut now all these patients have been transferred to other hospitals the nurses have been the nurses and the doctors and the paramedics have been transferred to other bmc hospitals for treatment and they are going to wait for all these people to get well then they are going to disinfect the hospital then they are going to start running the hospital so the problem here seems to be that the paramedic staff and the medical staff is not provided a personal protective equipment in common wards they are only provided ppe in an isolation facility but in mumbai we are seeing that there are a lot of cases coming up in hospitals which are not suspected of coronavirus and they are testing positive for covid 19 which means that 
even in common wards and emergency wards in casual casualty wards we do need pve for health workers and paramedic staff because they are the ones who are at the front line and they are getting infected as we have seen in bokhar hospital in jaslok hospital in hinduja hospital in bhatia hospital and in sai hospital all of which have been sealed as of now we are seeing similar things that have been happening in delhi as well where doctors nurses and medical staff have reported that they're not getting enough ppes and n95 masks do we know if anything is being done in that regard or any particular steps that have been initiated or is there something that you think that the government can do right now so basically the protocol at least uh, that is being followed in maharashtra is based on the government advisory which says that personal protective equipment should only be used in isolation facility when a health worker is exposed to a covid-19 patient also we are falling short of adequate ppes because of which the government needs to ration it well but they know that in the coming months the need for ppe is going to increase and they do not have enough supply these are the two factors because of which the ppes in normal wards or in casualty wards are not being offered to health workers and i think even now the situation continues like that despite having so many cases amongst healthcare workers you mentioned that you know with hospitals focusing on covid-19 patients other cases are being affected you know in your conversations with doctors what are the things you know that they say about this so there are two issues happening here right now if there is a private nursing home which has a covid-19 case they are getting sealed so what they are doing is they are diverting all cough and cold and fever cases to government hospitals they are not admitting any patients there is so much panic even amongst doctors and nurses working in these smaller nursing homes and hospitals that patients with normal illnesses with normal ailments say a cancer patient or a or a diabetes patient who needs some kind of medical attention they are not getting entertained because nobody wants to take that risk of admitting a patient or uh, seeing a patient in opd as we all know that outpatient departments are completely shut in most of the hospitals so all the other illnesses are basically getting side tracked until they develop into critical cases and then they are getting admitted in government hospitals another problem that we are also seeing is a lot of doctors nurses and healthcare workers are facing discrimination in residential societies so right now uh, we have seven hills hospital which is a covid-19 designated hospital where most of these staffers and doctors have been given accommodation in a nearby hotel so that they don't have to travel till their home so these doctors and nurses are saying that their residential society does not allow them to work they are not allowed to enter or leave the premises there are conversations happening within uh, society groups that these people will bring infection to our building so that kind of discrimination is i think also hampering a lot of private healthcare workers from joining duty next we talk about uttar pradesh on wednesday the uttar pradesh government decided to seal corona virus hotspots in 15 districts until april 15th as part of a cluster containment exercise where only medical services and home delivery of essential items would be allowed amil bhatnagar who reports on uttar pradesh joins us to talk about it amil what are these hot spots that the delhi and up government have now sealed and how are the restrictions there different from the ones that were previously put in place so basically um there have been a number of cases in up in the last two weeks in noida alone there have been 63 cases till friday evening the highest in the state and a collective call was taken by the up government that till april 14th there will be an extended lockdown in particular hot spots of 15 districts where there have been more than 6 cases the initial announcement that was made by chief secretary was that the districts will be sealed which obviously threw a lot of people in panic there was panic buying people were out on the streets but it was later clarified that only certain hot spots identified in those districts will be sealed now what are those hot spots those hot spots are basically where contact tracing has been carried out after a positive patient was found so in these places there have been number of cases linked to either one individual or more say for example in noida sector 137 there was one person who was tested positive and then two of his family members were tested positive so in those areas there is a larger scope that there could be transmission via a person who, who merely stays in that area so those are high risk zones and there are containment efforts being carried out in those hot spots so for example in noida there are 22 such spots um, in ghaziabad there are 13 such spots in lucknow there are between 30 to 15 spots again so all of these specific areas identified have had positive cases and there stands a greater chance that more cases might come up specifically in those areas okay and in 
in terms of restrictions what what all will be allowed and what all will not be allowed so the standard lockdown that has been put in place in the last two weeks that rules apply obviously to the entire districts but for specifically these hotspots there is some there needs to be some clarity which is that a there is no movement allowed so for example in a normal lockdown you can be issued curfew passes where if you have to go to a shop or if you have to buy a particular essential item you will be given a pass and you will be allowed to travel but in these sealed areas there is no movement no private vehicles are allowed only if you have a medical emergency you are allowed or if you are involved in the work of any essential service for example if you are in say media or you work in a factory where say it manufactures bread so your occupation comes under essential work so then only you can be allowed otherwise there is no movement happening even within the hotspot as well for example if i live in a tower i cannot go to the b tower of that housing society if the housing society is a hotspot the only people that are allowed in those hotspots are police fire department medical health officials who are constantly carrying out sanitizing there will be extra policing in those areas and uh, there will be 24 hour patrolling to ensure basically no one violates lockdown so in a way if you were to understand this this is a stricter enforcement of lockdown that we've already seen with obviously lesser movement happening okay so what are the kind of measures that have been put in place so that you know the delivery of essential services takes place smoothly and in case there is a medical emergency so in these hotspots there are no shops that are open whether it's a medical shop whether it's a ration shop or an atm so there is no transaction basically taking place in those hotspots to avoid even that amount of interaction in place of that the up government has tasked the local administration to make sure that there is door to door supply of all essential items for example noida dm in the morning released a list of fruit and vegetable vendors with their mobile numbers in specific areas so that people in the hotspot can contact those people and they can deliver those particular items there are milk deliveries being carried out there are medicine deliveries are on call so there are time slots decided so between say 10 to 1 pm and 4 to 6 pm there are deliveries of milk vegetables happening medicines are on call so you can call that anytime it's a 24 hour thing with regards to medical emergencies all you have to do is show your medical documents and if you have uh, like an ailment or a treatment going on and need to go for regular visits those documents will be enough and besides that there is an ambulance on call so if you need to be rushed for an emergency that ambulance will take again no private vehicles are allowed in these cases as well so the administration is obviously you know trying to make a door to door mechanism but uh, the policing is going to be a crucial element of it because the enforcement cannot happen by the administration alone so there're going to be policemen present major quantities there're going to be an sho level officer manning several areas under the jurisdiction so we're going to be seeing a lot of presence of officers and of all departments whether police medical or administration to ensure that you know people don't step out do you know what kind of reaction people have shown to this and what kind of things followed after this was announced on wednesday evening uh, so there was a lot of panic on wednesday afternoon when the initial announcement came that the districts are going to be sealed that miscommunication really created a uh, confusion in the people because first of all people did not know what the word sealing means secondly people did not know which areas are going to be sealed so there was a general panic that everyone had the apprehension that it might be their area so in that 3 4 hours of clarification and the list was issued in several in the 15 districts the list was issued by evening so till that time hundreds and thousands of people had come out on the roads to buy vegetables there was hoarding reported there was people trying to elbow and trample their way into shops so there was a lot of chaos till evening and the lockdown was supposed to come into effect from 12 am wednesday night the thing is there was little to no clarity on as to what the particular decision entails in terms of restrictions in terms of movement in terms of the geography of it so thursday during the day the administration has carried out a lot of sanitization the fire department has been carrying out a lot of cleaning in those areas which is also one of the measures that have to be taken in those hotspots but now the primary complaint still remains about the deliveries because there is still yet to be a rigid mechanism that could ensure deliveries on time so people are apprehensive as to how the next one or two days are going to be even the dm is asking for cooperation of people because they do not have a system in place yet so the general complaint is that had this been planned a little in advance had this been given a day or two notice there could have been a stronger mechanism because right now there are people just locked in the houses and are relying on services or on door to door services which are also yet to fully developed 
So the next two days we're going to see going to see a lot of complaints about things not reaching on time and perhaps families running out of essentials because again no movement is allowed. So yes, the general perception is that had this been told to them at a prior notice, they would have also figured out something for themselves. Similar restrictions have also been placed in Delhi, where at least 22 small pockets of settlements, lanes, apartment complexes have been notified as containment zones. More areas in the capital are also likely to be sealed. And in the end, we talk about West Bengal. Among the things that were part of the economic relief package that the government announced a few days after the lockdown was that 20 crore women who were Jandhan account holders would get 500 per month for the next three months to help them run their households. Now, in the state of West Bengal, hundreds of women have been queuing up and standing in line for hours to get this money. Ravi Bhattacharya, who reports on West Bengal, joins us on a call to talk about these women and what they've been going through. I think that the Prime Minister announced that rupees 500 will go into accounts of all women through Jan Dhan, which is Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana. Through that Yojana, rupees 500 is supposed to go for three months to the accounts of women all over India. Now, this is to give some kind of a financial respite, however small. during the lockdown now what has happened here in bengal is that though it was supposed to start on april 3 3 april it, it took a bit time for the banks to arrange it and put it into service points or service centers customer service centers there are a number of customer service centers uh, near villages and different districts of west bengal these are not actually bank branches these are small rooms where two bank employees sit and the dispense of this cash that is the procedure basically now what happened is that this is the 15th or 16th day of the lockdown these people are from uh, lower class uh, lower middle class background daily wage earners farm laborers people who pull rickshaws people who uh, drive e rickshaws in the villages people who are uh, having very small business units now this is the 15th or 16th day of the lockdown they don't have any cash at hand they have a hand to mouth existence they earn 300 rupees per day 360 rupees per day for farm laborers e rickshaw driver earns around 400 rupees per day so they don't have much of a savings so what happened is that by 15th day or 16th day when the kiosk or the customer service points of centralized bank especially we have seen sbi doing it started dispensing this rupees 500 however small it is there were long queues you know women with their children housewives mother in laws daughters some of them walked some of them got into bicycles and they came to the centers in the villages and they queued up you now some women queued up since 4 am in the morning some people were saying ke we waiting since 2 am in the morning because there is such a rush there was 200 250 in almost all the centers all the cash dispensing centers customer service centers we have visited initially some rice some some kgs of atta whatever money they had they hold it fearing that see we have to go through this entire period so now they don't have cash in hand number one number two is that there is this rumor going around in all bengal villages and the districts is that this lockdown will be extended now they don't have cash in hand this rumor also added up thirdly there is another factor that grocers you know in village and towns traditionally grocers give you credit in times of new you can get a credit for a month or month two but since grocers now they themselves are saying this women's were complaining that the grocers are saying that we don't know how many days you guys will be out of work you know three months four months you know some people are saying till september the lockdown may continue which may be a rumor so i will not get my credit in time i'll not get my money if i don't get my money already the stocks are dwindling so i will like get you know cash to buy more stocks so I, you know, the grocers absolutely stopped giving credit so these are the factors which drove this hundreds of women into each kiosk of all ages having jandhan account you now to just get rupees 500 now this kiosk operate from 8 am to 8 am in the evening and we, we went to a number of kiosks where in each kiosk there were two bengal police constables and at least four civic volunteers to keep law and order intact because there's this mad rush and you have to have a social distances thing going on when you have 200 or 250 women queuing up this is the situation in bengal which we saw when we went to the villages in different districts so you spoke to a number of these women who were standing in 
these queues. What are the kind of things that they had to say? Specifically, while we were traveling through uh, North 24 Parganas district, we went to Bonga, we went to Gaighata. These are small towns and attached to a number of small villages. You know, in each queue, there was this characters, this woman's wives were standing. Now, we met housewives standing with their mother-in-laws. That same family came down a day before also, but they couldn't make it to the counter. Such a long queue was there. So the second day they came down and these people were frantic. They were saying we couldn't cook at home. So we will have this, what we call it in Bengal, panta bhat, means it's ricey water. So we'll have that. Now, for the past two days, nothing has been cooked because now for the entire day, since 4 a.m., we are standing here. And by evening, by 8 a.m., we couldn't reach the counter. So there were tales of elderly woman standing in the queue. Maybe husband is sick. Only son is a van rickshaw puller who has no work to do. And they keep on complaining and they were so frantic. So there were a lot of voices in those crowds. You know, people were concerned about how they will tide over, how they will tide over the lockdown. Nobody was speaking about COVID-19. When I asked them, they said, yeah, the disease is there. We know it is there. But for us, it is a question of subsistence right now. You now we have children. We have grandchildren. So we have to take care of our family. We simply just don't have cash in our hand. We don't have any money, cash at hand. You know, the fear of this virus is there. We are all scared. But the fear of not having to get into a point where we won't get any food is much more in our minds. That's why however small is rupees 500, you know, for an urban guy, rupees 500 is nothing. For them, it is like, I'm getting cash, I'm getting something in my hand so that I can go and buy something. So that is the situation going on in the villages of Bengal at the grassroots level. You were listening to Three Things by the Indian Express. Today's show, as always, was edited and mixed by our producer, Joshua Thomas. If you like the show, then do subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts. You can also recommend the show to someone you think will like it. Share it with a friend or someone in your family. It's the best way for people to get to know about us. You can also tweet us at Express Audio and write to us at podcasts at the rate indianexpress.com.